how's it going? This is Todd with Shutterstock, and hopefully what you just saw was an intro with a big floating balloon light thing. And I wouldn't know yet because I haven't built it yet. So there is a specific type of light fixture that I've always wanted to get my hands on for a project. I've always kind of found it A, pretty hard to access, and B, pretty hard to afford. And that light is a balloon light. Now they come in various forms. Typically they have HMI bulbs in them or tungsten bulbs in them, and they're created by a company called Airstar. And while I'm sure the Airstar product is phenomenal, I mean, they're used on all kinds of big sets. You see them everywhere in various magazines and stuff like that. I personally have never had the opportunity to use one. And that kind of leads me to my overall mission. And that mission is to create a DIY version of one of these types of lights. I gotta keep it cheap, it's gotta be really bright, and it's gotta be able to float. Here's everything you're gonna need. So to start off, you're obviously gonna need some really bright LED lights. I went with this set of quad row LED strip lights. These are super bright lights with a CRI of about 95, and each strip will use about 190 watts of power. And that leads me to the power supply. So each one of these strips uses about 190 watts, so you wanna get a power supply that has plenty of headroom for that amount of power usage. So I went with this 350 watt power supply. Now there are a whole bunch of different power supplies available. Here's a shot of the unit number of the one that I purchased. And I bought two of the LED strips, so I went ahead and bought two of these power supplies. And then for the main part of the build, that's right, we're gonna use some shower liner. And for this, I bought four of them just in case, so I had an extra, but I ended up only using three. You wanna make sure that you buy all extra wide shower curtains. The ones I got were 108 inches wide. And you wanna also make sure that you choose the frost shower curtain. This is gonna give you really nice diffused light. You're also gonna need a couple of power supply cables. I just bought a couple of basic computer cables that I knew I was going to end up cutting apart. And you're gonna also need some lamp cord. The length of this is going to decide basically how far your balloon can get from the ground. So I went with 50 feet and I cut that in half. So my balloon was able to go 25 feet off of the ground. And then a few tools that you're gonna need is just a screwdriver, a wire stripper, and just a regular iron for ironing clothes. Now I wanna be clear about a couple things. One, I know this isn't necessarily a super cheap DIY build, but I kinda of wanted to just put this out there as an experiment, just to see if A, if I could pull it off, and B, maybe if any of you guys might have some better ideas on how to pull this off. I, at this point, have no clue whatsoever if this is going to actually work. In fact, I was so unsure that this would work that I went ahead and built a prototype. And here it is, one second. Now, as you can see, this one's not really quite bright enough, um, and it's not really very big, and it only holds air for about 30 minutes. There's a leak in here somewhere and I can't find it, but you know, it kind of works. And what that tells me is that maybe there's a chance. All right, so let's get started. The plan is to take two full-size shower curtains and use them as the top and bottom. Then we'll take the other shower curtains and cut it to get the long sides and the short sides. So first you'll lay everything out and go ahead and cut the grommets off of two of the shower curtains. And make sure to set those aside because we're gonna use them later. Then go ahead and start cutting your side pieces. Starting with the long sides, cut along the fold lines from the way the curtain was folded in the packaging. Then go ahead and cut the shorter sides. You'll want to lay this down next to one of the big pieces so you can make sure that you cut the right size. And now you should have six total shower curtain pieces, the two long sides, the two short sides, and the top and bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and start attaching everything together, and that's where the iron comes in. What we're going to do is melt the seams together using a super hot iron. Using a towel or some other thick cloth, you're going to use a ton of steam and heat to melt these pieces together. I used a small apple box underneath so I had a flat surface. When you're doing this, be very careful and diligent to not leave any areas where a leak could appear and slowly move the iron back and forth so that it doesn't melt any actual big holes in the shower curtain. And this process can definitely take a little while. So this is my life now. The shoes are off. Uh, just 
it's kind of relaxing. Pro tip though, if you want it to smell nice instead of like melting plastic, throw a little essential oil in the in the iron there. A little home home and garden tip for you there. Right now we're rocking some uh, cedar wood and juniper. So instead of it smelling like melting plastic, it smells like I'm in a nice winter forest. Once you have all of your side pieces installed, you need to find some way to add two different valves to one of the ends. One valve is to allow air to go in and close it off, and the other valve is to have some airtight way to run your power. For this, I used this adorable floaty with the little mermaid on it. It was 99 cents and it happened to have two valves already on it. And I just cut them out and added them to one of the ends of my balloon. And for this, I just used a whole lot of glue from a hot glue gun and used a whole lot to make sure that it was airtight. Okay, so I have two of my valves installed now and they're not pretty. I burned my fingers quite a bit uh, trying to put them on and I ended up using a hot glue gun. Um, they don't look great, but I think they'll work. And now for the fun part. Now we can go ahead and add our LED strip lights. Luckily, these LED lights have adhesive backing on them, so all you gotta do is just stick them directly to the shower liner. You wanna make sure that you spread them out pretty evenly so you get some nice even light, and you really wanna be careful to not leave any of the sticky parts out in the open because they could really easily pull a hole in your shower curtain. Once you have your LEDs installed, now you can go ahead and power them. First, run the lamp cord through the valve that we created, with your lamp cord, you'll find that there is a bumpy side and a smooth side. Much like jump starting a car, you just wanna make sure that you're consistent on both sides. In this case, I'm gonna use the smooth side as the red wire and the bumpy side as the black wire. Use your wire strippers to expose a little bit of both sides and then twist it up and bend it in a 90 degree angle. Then on the LED side, bend that side as well and twist them together. And before you move on, just make sure you wrap it with some electrical tape so that none of the wire is exposed. And then on the power supply side, you're going to attach the red wire, or in my case, the smooth wire, to the V plus terminal, or the positive terminal. And then you're gonna put the bumpy wire into the V minus terminal, or the negative terminal. And just use your screwdriver to screw those in tight. And finally, just take the power supply cable that you got and expose the three different wires, you should have a black wire, a white wire, and a green wire. You're going to attach the black wire to the L terminal on your power supply, and you'll put the white wire in the N slot on the power supply, and then you'll put the green wire in the ground slot, which is this weird little symbol. And there you go, now your LEDs have power and you should be able to plug them in. I'm pretty happy with the progress I made today. I've got it all wired up. I've got the power supplies ready to go. I've got the LEDs installed on the fixture. The output's looking pretty good. I'm getting about 6,000 lux when I'm about 0.5 meters away. But we're talking a big, nice, bright, soft light. So that's exactly what I wanted. So tomorrow, uh, the goal is to put the top on it, uh, pressure test it, start checking for leaks, all that kind of stuff. And after that, we should be pretty much ready to go. I'm good. All right, the time, the time has come. The time has come. Cut to footage of the we want Hindenburg the burning. <laughs> we, we had to Google earlier whether or not helium was flammable. There should be no fire though. Yeah. There really should be no fire. And just as a quick side note, there's currently a massive helium shortage. So just fill it with air. Don't even bother with the helium. Okay, let's get back to it. So we've shot here before and uh, Logan had a pretty rough night. Roll, roll that clip. Right there. So to start, I went ahead and tied down all the various corners to trees or nearby objects. And uh, right there's Mike. This is his yard. You might remember him. Hey everyone, Michael here for Shutterstock. And I began the long, long process of trying to fill this thing up with helium. And it took a long time. Uh, I don't think it's going to float. And by the time we got to the last tank, I started to lose hope. Last can. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing it. <laughs> 
then at some point during the last can of helium, it just started to take off. I plugged it in, and man, was that thing bright. It was way brighter than I had thought in the studio, and I was getting really, really excited. Overall, I'd consider this build a success. The light was really, really bright, it has really good output, and it floats on its own. And when you compare the cost of renting or using an Air Star, I definitely think it's worth giving it a shot. <laughs> At the end, you get really crazy. <laughs> All right, cool, we got it. So as I said, I am currently recording even this outro without knowing how the build ended up. So maybe it floated, maybe it didn't. But having said all that, again, please let me know if you have any ideas on how to make this even better or easier. If you know of a different type of fabric other than shower curtain that might be a little bit stronger. And as always, I hope you found this video helpful. Maybe you uh, think I'm trash and I need to not build any more stuff like this. Just let me know in the comments. <laughs> you know, like, subscribe, tell your friends. I'll see all of you in the next video.